All right, so let's kick this off. We're told that everyone gets an equal say online. We're told that everyone can grab attention online, grab the ears of the audience. But any of you have written a blog post, a really good one, you worked hard on it, and then you published it, and your blog post got trounced by yet another list post by Mashable, or a fake presidential candidate by, on Huffington Post. <laughs> Looking at you, Palenti. And, and, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, New York Times, really poorly researched article in New York Times. And these uh, posts get massive attention online. Um, most of the great stuff that I find online to read, I find it on your blog. I find it on a smaller blog, right? So, um, yeah, we're, it's the, the system is not set up for you and I. So we're going to change that. Um, there's, um, I entitled this thing Myth Busting the Blogosphere, right? So I'm going to show you some tools that we're working on that's going to change the system in our favor, OK? So right now, with Triber, you get, to, you get the initial social attention. You get the initial social burst uh, via your uh, tribe mates and whatnot. And that's good. It's good for short term. But long term traffic comes from where? It comes from Google, right? It's, it comes from Google. That's changing, right? Uh, one of the things that all empires have in common is that they eventually fail, right? From Persian and Ottoman to Russian and, and, and yahoos of the world, and it doesn't matter what kind of empire we're talking about. Eventually, they all fail, and Google's showing cracks already. But for now, for the next couple of few years, Google's still the king of this traffic mountain. So SEO is the name of the game, right? Here's the thing. When it comes to SEO, you and I don't stand a chance. All right? We don't stand a chance against the guy that's sitting over there named Dan Christo, right there. We don't stand a chance against him, right? Um, do, uh, by the way, he is the maker of Triber. Where's Andres? Andres, there. This is uh, the other maker of Triber, right? right? So we don't stand a chance against guys like Dan Christo. His official title is Director of SEO Innovation. Do you know where he gets his SEO information from? Tell him, Dan. What? From me. These guys read Google patents, US patents that Google applies for. And they get their SEO information from there to figure out what's coming next. Because whatever worked six months ago is not going to work six months from now. All right? When was the last time you casually paroused a US patent? <laughs> All right? It just doesn't happen. All right? So here's the thing, guys. Yes, SEO is changing, but there's few fundamental facts about SEO that have not changed since its inception and likely will never change. Things like uh, a high number of quality backlinks pointing to your site. You always need those. The question is, how do you get them? Right? So there's all this, you know, ways and methods of getting backlinks. Uh, link baiting or this and that. Infographics are good for it, whatever, right? You want to know truth about backlinks? Here's where it starts. First, you have to be known. How am I going to link to you if I don't know you? You know who's known? Mashables are known. Huffington Posts are known. New York Times is known. Wikipedia is known. We're not. If I'm going to link to you, I have to know you first. We're talking about human engine optimization here. This is all just human stuff. It has nothing to do with technical aspects, right? Second, I have to like you. Your content could be pumpkin pie, but if I don't like you, I'm not linking to it. Thanks. I'm not. And it's, it's not like I'm the only one. Right? If we're honest with ourselves, this is how 99% of us operate, and the other 
are delusional. <laughs> All right? If I don't like you, I'm not recommending you. It's, that's the bottom line, right? Next up, you got to make me look good. If I'm going to link to you, make me look good. Why do people share stuff? Because they're really concerned, and this goes to what Lena was talking about. People are really concerned about a genocide in Uganda. They should be, but they're not. People share that stuff. 4,000 word article uh, on New Yorker that's published uh, about genocide in Uganda, right? People share that stuff not because they read it. <laughs> At best, they skimmed it, right? They share that stuff because it makes them look globally aware. Yeah. It makes them look good. Why do people share oatmeal stuff? You guys know the oatmeal, right? Because it makes me look funny. Right? It makes me look funny. So if I'm going to link to you, make me look good. All right? That's human engine optimization. Right? And by the way, uh, people that will know you and like you and... Um, you know, people that have an interest in, you know, um, making you look good and, you know, them look, you know, <laughs> vice versa is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Um, it's your tribes mates, right? That's how you get to know people on tribal. Okay, now, so backlinks is the number one issue that you really can't control. I can't force you to backlink to me, right? The other thing I can't control, and this is probably the second most important thing, is the anchor text. Everybody knows what anchor text is? No. Right? When you see that, uh, let, uh, like a piece of text in blue, it's a hyperlink, right? It says maybe like click here or something like that. That click here is the anchor text. Now, you know, pointing to you by saying click here is okay, right? But if I write about marketing, a better anchor text for me that would be contextual for Google, so Google can figure out what I'm about, because I'm not about click here, I'm about marketing, right? So the anchor text that I wish you would use when you link to me is something like blogging or social media or marketing or whatever, right? But I can't control that, right? Okay. Well, you can. This is the magic bullet for the next 18 months. Not only can you control um, people linking back to you, not only can you build a bunch of backlinks and naturally, but you can control the anchor text. And I'm going to show you how right now. I'm talking about Triber's reblog feature. How many of you have used it? I see one, two, three, four, five, six. OK, good. All right. I'm going to show you something very cool. Okay. So here I am, I'm in my tribal stream. It feeds me the posts from all of my favorite bloggers, right? And one of my favorite bloggers, she's right up here on top, Jessica. She's also in the back. Wave to everyone, Jessica, right? Um, she wrote a post on how to monetize Instagram. This is a really cool post, all right? Um, I haven't seen anything anywhere about Instagram monetization. Turns out there's this Insta Canvas thing. It's pretty cool, right? I like her post. Uh, I think my audience, my blog audience, is going to enjoy that post as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reblog her post. We call it reblog, guys, but it's really syndication 2.0, right? It's what Mashables and Huffington Posts have done for over a decade. Well, at least in Huffington Post's case, right? When you go to Huffington Post and you read, it says, this post was originally published on blah, blah, blah. You've seen that, right? That's syndication. They reblogged it. They republished it. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to, with a single click, I'm going to act as an editor, editor-in-chief of my blog, right? Jessica wrote an excellent post. I want to share it with my, with my audience. I'm going to reblog it with a single click. Check this out. So I can read the post right there, right? And I can say reblog. Bam. Check this out. This post is now waiting for me 
in my drafts. It's not an embed. It's an actual post, right? Got to be careful with those embeds. All right. Yeah. Yep. So there it is. How to monetize photos on Instagram. I can do a quick edit, so I can add a, act as an editor in chief. She's one of my writers, journalists, whatever you want to call it. I can change the, um, uh, the, the headline if I think a better headline would be you know, well suited for this. Um, I can maybe make the uh, images smaller or whatever the case might be. Removing links would be highly unethical and it would boot you from Triber. Just putting that out there. Jessica wrote this, right? And she has a couple of links pointing to where she thinks you know, they should be pointing to, and it's actually pointing to her other content, right? So removing those and putting like an affiliate link would be highly unethical. We trust everyone to act like adults, right? Don't be a douchebag. That's really what it comes down to, right? Don't do anything that you wouldn't want other people to do to you. So now we're releasing a new version of the plugin that's going to remove this additional thing because it actually ends up with two um, uh, author boxes. So that's all I did. I just removed the uh, extra author box. And I'm just going to publish this. One click to reblog. You can do editing if you want. Right? And now it's published. Oh, yeah. You wait. Okay. <laughs> right? Bam. That is the same post that Jessica published on her blog, right? Who controls the links? Jessica. The author. Right. Jessica does. Who controls the anchor text? Jessica. Jessica does, right? So all you have to do to get backlinks and to get good anchor text is write good content that your tribe mates want to reblog. Quality content, quality tribes, Triber takes care of the rest. Wait, <laughs> the icing is not there yet. I said syndication 2.0, right? I did say that. Here's the syndication 2.0. Here's something that you guys have that Mashable, Huffington Post, none of the other ones have. Check this out. Jessica published this post yesterday. It already has some comments. Bam! We share the comments section. Any comments that are on her blog are also visible on mine. Somebody leaves a comment here, it's visible on Jessica's blog. Nobody else has this. This is new game. No, not yet. That's definitely something we want to build. Yeah. Say it again? You're not asking. Yes and no. Jessica has the control over whether or not her post is rebloggable. Right? So she says it's rebloggable, anybody can see it in her tribe can reblog. Correct, in her tribe. Yes, that is correct. Right? So think about this, right? Um, you have 10 tribe mates, right? Or however many, right? You publish a really great post, 10 of them reblog it. Right? Now your post appears across 10 different blogs. If you put two backlinks in there, three backlinks, however many backlinks you put in there, right? Across 10 blogs, now you're getting 30 backlinks going back to your blog. Not to mention that all the comments are shared. Let me ask you another Yes. Uh huh. Would you want somebody to do it to you? I yeah, I wouldn't, right? It's like take, take it as closely to it as you can get. Stop with duplicate content. Huffington Post has duplicate content. Mashable has duplicate content. Do they get uh, punished? No. Why? Because Google doesn't care about duplicate content across multiple sites. Google cares about duplicate content on your site. You publish the same post over and over again, you're going to get penalized. Right? So that's the thing that I talked about, you know, 
what, six, seven years ago, Google did care about duplicate content in the sense that you're talking about. But it doesn't anymore. So I do want to point out two more things. Again, guys, Dan and Andres and I stay up at night and try to figure out what is the um, thing, the, this, you know, the secret sauce that big sites have that we don't, right? They have editors. Well, now you can be the editor with a single butt reblog. Bam, done. Right? Plus, you already curated people in your tribe, so they're pre-edited, if you will. Right? Um, the shared comment system, that's just genius. That was Andres' idea. Right? The shared comment system, it's just, uh, it blew my mind. Right? I understood it conceptually, how it would work before we made it, but once we made it, my mind went like this. <laughs> right? But there's two other things that big sites have that we don't, and I want to talk about those. Right? First up, traffic. Right? Traffic is a false god. I can't emphasize that enough. You don't care about traffic. Nobody cares about traffic. You don't need traffic. What you need is attention. Traffic is only as good as the attention that it brings you. You think Oprah cares if her show runs on like a cable channel 23 in New York and a different cable channel in Chicago? She doesn't care as long as her content reaches you, right? It's attention, not traffic that you need. You need tra traffic is you ha if you're Huffington Post and you make a living selling ads, right? That's what you need. You need traffic. How many of you sell ads? Well, you can. You're just not going to make a, a good living doing it, right? Not on my blog, right? <laughs> What you need is attention. And reblog spreads you across multiple blogs. Ergo, gives you uh, multiple chances of actually getting in front of people. Right? It's attention, not traffic that we need. The other thing I want to point out is um, publishing frequency. All the bloggers are talking about publishing on a regular basis. What they fail to mention is that in order for you to even come close to competing with who you need to rank with, you need to publish 15, 20, 25 times per day. Mashable publishes 25 times per day. You throw that much garbage at the wall, something's going to stick. <laughs> All right? So you, there's no way you and I can compete. The thing is, Mashables and Huffington Posts and New York Times and all these Read Write Web and Gawker and Jezebel and you name it, all these big ass sites, they have an unfair advantage. They have the only finite resource that matters, attention. They have it, we don't. We need to get it. Thank you. <laughs>